I'm River Bay, and welcome to my gun kingdom. We're here with the Mossberg 640 KD Chuckster, and it's a 1974. Now, we ran into some issues, and John's going to discuss you know, what to look out for when you're trying different ammo with these older rifles. Um, you know, John Mossberg did such a great job offering this to the public and with a really, really nice barrel, uh, one of the best barrels for a 22 Magnum in the industry. Um, it's very accurate, shoots tight groups. Um, to lower the cost for the public, they use birch as a, for the stock. And it's a hardwood, just like walnut, but they, they stained it a walnut stain. But anyway, we have a bold action 22 Magnum here with this Mossberg 640. Now, um, I have sighted this gun in, and I have several videos here on the channel where I sighted in. The last one I did was around 100 yards. And now, today, we had a little, we had a little uh, mismounting with the scope and we had to remount the scope uh, so we could get the eye relief back further for us and uh, so we're going to sight it in again but we're going to start right at the 100 yard range john thinks it's pretty close so we'll just go ahead and we won't have to start out with 25 or 50 yards but we'll just zero it today at 100 yards and now we've had some issues with these with these um, older style guns you know, when, when they're making new, uh, when manufacturers of ammo companies make ammo nowadays, sometimes they don't fit or they don't eject uh, with the ejectors that they've had in, in these guns. But we found out that CCI um, does uh, a lot better in this gun than the Winchester uh, 40 grain. And now the CCI 40 grain. And... Uh, John, you've had one of these guns, and start out by telling us what these guns used to cost back in the day. Around forty to fifty dollars. They actually made a couple of different models of them, but this was the one that was very popular. That's about all they cost: forty-nine ninety-nine, and, and uh, they, were, they were good guns. You know, that's a great price, isn't it? Back then, yeah, I don't know what that'd be equal to today. Probably three hundred dollars. Yep, at least. Yep. What do and you think about the issue with the uh, not ejecting certain shells? Well, some guns would do that. I, I was still thinking of taking apart and clean out the uh, chamber good. But I've had different guns don't want to eject certain shells, and say my little Winchester twenty two. It'll shoot everything but Winchester shell for some reason. Not knocking the shell, but that just does not want to chamber them and stuff good. And uh, CCI tends to work good in this gun. So you you want to get whatever shell works in them. Yeah, definitely. Number one thing. And this is going to be used for hunting varmints. So we definitely want to we want to sight it in with the ammo that we're going to hunt with with this gun and uh, so we've chose the CCI um, hollow points uh, Winchester calls these power points because they're these are basically I think the same is about the same as those Winchesters yeah as far as speed well, and well these are 1875 feet per second and the Winchesters are 1910 so yeah. what's that how many feet yeah. difference is that that's not yeah. much is nope. it nope Back in the day when I had mine, that's about all that was available. It was a 40 grain, either hollow point or not hollow point. There we go. Now they've got 30 grain ones that's 1,800 feet per second. And but I think it has a lot to do with how they make the rim. Oh, yeah. And how the ejector uh, cooperates with these rims. So CCI... This ejector for this with this gun does a lot better. Yep, that happens on a lot of rim fires. Find out which one works the best. Now, what did you use your Mossberg for? Wood chucks. Okay, that's back when everybody carried had a rifle rack in your truck. And 
yeah. carried it everywhere with me. See wood chuck, you go out out in the field and shoot it. Yeah. So we got a four by nine, or I'm sorry, a four by twelve scope uh, on the Mossberg here, and this will definitely reach out to 150 yards, and that's that's the max you'd want to do. Um, you know, um, you're going to have about 110 pounds of foot pounds of energy at 150 yards, and that's uh, sufficient to take a varmint at 150 yards, right, John? Oh yeah, these these are deadly on wood chuck. Yeah. I had high powered varmint rifles. I think I shot more woodchucks with my magnum than I did anything. Now this has a drop compensator on it. Why don't you tell everybody what about the drop compensator? Because I know you have several scopes with drop compensators. Well, they're nice because you can sight it in and then you get a shoot. You just drop down to whatever yardage. And yeah. what are they usually, what are those, 25-yard increments? Usually. So they're different on different guns. A bit, but he, I say even today with the different speeds of ammo makes a big difference. Yep. Because the faster ammo tends to shoot flatter, so you don't need as much drop. So you really have to sight in the bullet drop compensators with the ammo you're using, I think. I mean, that's how I do it. Because all my 22s got it. Well, I sighted in 50 yards with my target ammo all well, I can go to the high powered ammo and a hundred yards and shoots almost dead on with the same mark as my 50 yard because it got a lot less drop so it's, it's got to do with that but it's probably good for everybody to read their owner's manual that comes with the scope for right. the, for the drop for the drop compensator because some sure. of them just have marks and then they'll tell you go online and and uh It'll tell you what caliber you shoot, what each line will represent. I know a lot of lot of uh, manufacturers of scopes. They don't put a manual in there. Uh, they oh. give you a website to go yep. to and Everything download a, a website anymore. Yep. Yeah, download a PDF file. Yep. You could always print it off, I guess, and carry it with you. But I guess the best thing to do is memorize it. Right. Make a little copy of it. Whatever. Yep. yep. When you get range finders. Right, right. There was no such thing as a range finder uh, back in the day, right? Well, not that I knew of, but we didn't have any. Yeah. yeah so we, could, we knew where they were in the fields, and we'd set up about 100 yards from them and wait for them to come out. Yeah. Which I said, we actually hunted them, not just see them out in the field and shoot them 500 yards away. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, that's the way we did it back in the day, too. Yeah. I used a 243 back then. With a three by nine scope. Yeah, but I had a three by nine on my twenty two Magnum. Yeah, we didn't we didn't have anything fancy like a four by twelve back then, did we? We probably did, but I didn't, we didn't even look for it. I mean, back yeah. then, you paid fifty bucks for a gun and twenty bucks for a scope. Yeah, right. <laughs> These were probably more expensive back in the day too. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we're at the hundred yard range, uh, and John is going to sight this gun in today. And um, so I'll be running the camera, and but we're going to let him do it. And he thinks, even though we've remounted it, you know, if we discussed the rings and how these, we had these to were funky, because you go, you got such a little spot to put the rings. Well, that's usually you put them on each side of of the adjustments there, but you do that's how you had it, and it was so far forward. It was all it was all the way up to here. These did, they, they, it was kind of a not too good of a thought out idea for the mounts. And a lot of it is because they put this, it's nothing there, but it's a piece of plastic way behind the bolt. So the whole bolt mechanism sits up forward. And plus, this bolt goes up so high, you, you hit your scope sometime. But so would you say it, this is an unorthodox way of putting them yes. in? So? Theoretically, I think you, so you, too. You, yeah. I mean, this whole to me, it's not as sturdy mounted, but you have no choice on these. Yeah, you know, it doesn't feel too bad. It feels pretty sturdy. Right. Oh yeah, with the Magnum, it'd be different if it was a high-powered rifle. True. But that you the rear mount. That's a the only spot you have to put it. I I like that point. There. That's a very good point. You know, since this isn't a high-powered rifle, mounting the springs in an unorthodox manner isn't too bad then since it's only a 22 magnum but right. like you get into a big bore rifle 
it would probably make a big difference then, wouldn't it? Yeah, you'd think. I'd then know. what would you put, would you have to mount something on top if it was a high bore rifle to, to have it like, or to have it on one, one ring on this side? Well, and, the high power number one is going to have the screws in it so you can put any variable different types of mounts. True, true, yeah. If this was tapped, which they aren't, you could do it, but the, the way it is, this is where you got to put one mount. So you got to, and that's too far forward. So, it is what it is. Okay, so John's going to cite this in, like I said, and he's going to give us his final thoughts at the end of this video. So make sure you stay tuned, and he'll give you his his best best thoughts on the gun, right, John? And what you yep. think about it, and, and what you need to do. So. So make sure you stay all the way to the end and, and listen to that, that final thoughts. What do you say we get shooting this gun, John? Yep, make some noise. All right, let's go. Oh, low and you're right. You're uh, eight inches low. You hit the target finally. I'm shooting right at the bullseye of the top target. So you need to come up about 12 inches. Where'd I hit? You hit the bottom of the black of the target. You see it? Okay. So your wind, your windage is good now. Hell, I moved it up. Oh, maybe not 12 inches. Try 10 inches. <laughs> yeah. Well, for half inch per move, move that should be. now and over to the left four inches you see it nope so it's high so I got to come down you got to come down about four inches and over to the right four inches to the right four inches yep Okay, your elevation is good. Now you need to come back to the left. Yeah, I see it now. Probably about oh two, two to two and a half. I was at about three o'clock. When the camera is out of bullets. Yeah, that trigger, I mean, it's hard to pull. There's no give on it. It goes off then. So, you think they make triggers for this? I don't know if they do. That. First thing, I'd need to, to take apart and clean and move it. Maybe there's nothing you can do on these. These are very primitive trigger goes up into the bolt and you've got to drop down. Just to the right of the bullseye. You're touching the bullseye though.
below the first one you hit the door guy, just below it. To the right. You went clear over to the right that time. Well, no, you went over to the left. Sorry. To the, the elevation is perfect. To the left of what? The bullseye? Or yeah. The, still in the bullseye? No, it's to the left. You see where the number nine is to the left? The number nine? Uh, it's right beside the number nine. The elevation is perfect. I mean, you just got to come over. Now where did it hit? You see it? Where did it hit? He hit like about a quarter inch off the bullseye. To the, the left? left? On the left. Bullseye, right next to the very first one you hit in the bullseye. Do you see it? It's a real no. tight group. We're out on the bullseye. I want to get right in the middle of the bullseye. It's in the lower left area. It's about uh, 7 o'clock on the bullseye. Now that hit a woodchuck from there. Oh yeah. Right. Do that. That's right dead center. Seven o'clock. So those three are grouping right next to each other at seven o'clock. But you're outside. Let me go, go. So does it still need to probably go up one clip? on in the bullseye on that one. Oh. 
probably about as good as we're going to get it. Just not holding the tightest group as I'd like. We're putting most of them in the bowls, I know. Yep. I try, am I getting too many holes? Should I go to the bottom target? Uh, yeah. Might as well. To the right, right, right to the inch. right, yep. You see it on there. I think those are a lot better targets. I like those better. Right above the bowl. Oh, it's only about an inch bowl, right? Bullseye, just on the top edge. Yep. If you're in the bullseye. Right next to that one. Oh, you're way high on that one. Oh, yeah, right. No why? High. The windage, the windage is good. Huh? The windage is good. Slightly to the right. About an inch to the right. Low and to the left slightly. <sighs> You just don't want to group that great. The elevation is perfect. You're just over to the left about two inches.
you were high on that one until you left. Well, it's just not grouping. I mean, as good as I'd like to, them or I'll be dead woodchuck. I have uh, I have a, a non-hollow point. These aren't hollow points. These are just these are mini mags. So. Yeah. I'm gonna try a few of these. Sure. See, those aren't hollow points. The same speed. Yep. We'll just put five of these down there and just see if it. Okay. Theoretically. Anyway. Oh, how do you, you, you need? think? You think they'd be the same? Yeah. I didn't see that one. You're just high about a quarter of an inch off the bullseye. Yeah. Way over to the left, about two and a half inches. Well, that would be. to the left two inches. No better. Just either me or something sure can't group them in there. Here just try I mean, try another five of these. Between me and the wind. So we're trying different we're trying a different ammo. These are the, my uh, CCI mini mag and these are not hollow points. So we're going to shoot another five of these, see if we can get them to group a little tighter. I'm going to go back to the top target. I don't have near as many holes as Did you see where that went? No, I didn't see that. I didn't see that one either. I'm aiming at the, at the white ring. Oh, you see right? it? No. I'm aiming at the white ring. The first, on the top target, the white ring, the first one up. Right at the center. Are you hitting it? No, no, I don't see. I don't see it either. I don't see those at all, do you? Nope.
Well, that doesn't eject. We'll put these on. These go a little faster than putting the individual ones on. Looks like we got it as close as we can get it today. We do have a little bit of a wind, but I think we did good. There we go. Going to the top turn. Scope is much better now. Low and to the right. Right next to the bullseye on that one. I don't see where that hit, do you? That one's stuck in there too, and that's a CCI. Oh, mine come out. I just did it again and it come out. Oh, really? There it goes. I like the scope back farther. It works. Yeah, I say it could actually come back a little bit farther, I think, but you can't with them mounts and that scope. I don't remember that trouble on mine, but that it's I haven't seen that online people complaining about about that. So you see other people other people mentioning right. that same issue? Well I think it's much better than it was. Well, let's go down to that lower target. We don't have many more to go over. Right next to the bottom of that bullseye. To the right? Nope, it's right underneath the bullseye, actually on the bottom, bottom target. That would be groundhogs, though, John. Yeah, right? definitely. It goes through the same hole. Uh -huh.
The group's getting a little better, isn't it? I think that was it. That hitting the bullseye? Actually, I got two of the bullseye, John. So it's shooting better groups, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You just got to get used to that trigger. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And guns like Capra's in the you could do to them or not. It's got a hell of a... You want to shoot the last five at the top target? No, go ahead. He's about the same as I was, so it must be... Yep. Uh, I think it's a good idea to have a couple people shoot it and see. Oh, yeah. Uh, which target? We got two in the bullseye on the bottom target. Should I go back to the upper target? Doesn't matter. Let's go back to the upper target. It just takes practice, you know, with this trigger and everything. I won't know until I edit the film. Top target. Yeah, looks like I got a couple in the top target too. Yeah, yeah I think that's as good as it's gonna get. We probably might as well say probably got two inch group. Yeah, I, I think uh there at the end, the last 15 shots were much better, and um, I was able to get it down a little bit tighter with the groups, even with the wind. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I say it's about the best you could do. Triggers aren't the greatest on those, and but I think it should be cleaned, don't you? Probably. Professionally cleaned, yeah. Cleaned and lube might help, but I just got a heck of a pull on it before it goes off it's crisp it's crisp there's no free play in it but you got to put a lot of pressure on it either that or practice a lot yeah. with it and but you tend to pull to the right when you got a hard trigger like that but in the rest and stuff we did okay i'm satisfied with the the ejections now yeah we had a couple hang up in there but it wasn't wasn't many like the winchester so right. it's ejecting the shells a lot better with the cci so you have to you have to do experiment around quite a bit uh, and make sure you get the right ammo for these older guns. But I like the way the scope is set up now. Uh, the eye relief is so much better. I still had to move my head a little bit forward on it. Yeah. You know, there's not much you can do the way they had no. to mount for that thing, the dovetails. 
That's the only place you can put the rings. Yeah, but I think it's, you know, the way it is right now, I think it's it's workable. Yeah. You know, it's doable. And um, I'm yeah. a lot pleased with the shells today. They're ejecting much better, and I like the scope, so much better improvement over the last time the scope was set up the other way. Even though it's it doesn't look right, but it works. Nothing else so you can do. It you have to go with what works, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a different. I mean, it's just not to me. It should be different than what it is. But with that bolt, there's no place to put the dovetails. And I think that's the way they all were. They actually made this in a, they even made a single shot. I've never seen one. I haven't either. And they made one with the shorter barrel. Some of them had gold triggers. If I'm thinking right, mine had a gold trigger. Some of them had plastic finger holds on the stock. I don't remember, I don't think mine had that, but I think mine did have a gold trigger. Some years they just gold, put a gold trigger on them. But I would say this this rifle's uh, no. zeroed in at 100 yards. Yeah, now. I don't think you're going to get it much better. No. And we, we waited till the wind would die down a little bit before we took our shots, too, if you noticed. Um, so it's not it's not a constant wind today. So we did have a little bit of a lay with the winds here and there. And I think we did good enough with the groups. Oh, yeah. We definitely would have got groundhogs for sure, oh, right? Yeah. Yep. You know, even though they're not like quarter-inch groups, you know, what's the size of a head of a groundhog? Well, you got about a good four-inch spot to hit. A lot them bigger on, than though, a squirrel, yeah. right? About oh yeah, probably three, three four, times the size. Three times the size of a squirrel. Yep. So yeah, so it's ready to go out to 150 yards for sure now, isn't it? Using your uh, bullet drop compensator. But thanks for joining us today, and uh, thanks for being here again, John. Appreciate oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Nice day to be out shooting. Yeah. Relaxing. Hit that subscribe button for us, and hit that like button if you like the video. Share it with your friends, and make sure you leave us a comment down below if you've had any issues with um, ammo um, not working in your guns. And, uh, you know, let, it, let us know anything if you've had your gun professionally cleaned and if it you know, worked a little bit better, whatever. But uh, thanks again for joining us. Appreciate it.